Our Father which art in heaven, thank you for your loving kindness. And we come before you transparent, recognizing that you know the thoughts and even the intent of our hearts and our deeds. Forgive us for our transgressions, creating us a clean heart, renew within us a right spirit. Thank you, O oh Lord, for all of your goodness and your salvation in particular. Thank you for the great sacrifice that you made at Calvary that enable us through faith to be reconciled, to be regenerated, to be justified, to be adopted and become children of God. Forgive us for all of our sins, those of commission and omission, enable us to not think more highly of ourselves than we ought and to humble ourselves and let each of us recognize that even in our humility, this is not weakness, but this is strength, harnessed by the Spirit of Christ. Bless us now. Promote healing in our bodies, minds, and soul. Create in us a clean heart, enable us to know that we are here today, not because we've been so faithful, but because of the multitude of thy tender mercies. Cleanse us. Continue to sanctify us that we might be steadfast, that we might have that steadfast spirit Bless us now as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to call your attention today to the book of Matthew. I want to read a few verses from the New King James Version, beginning at verse 1, that is chapter 2, verse 1. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. We want to reason with you today uh, with the subject, the coming of the Christ child. The coming of the Christ child. Four main points we want to emphasize. First one being his birth. Point number two, his infancy. Point number three, in Egypt. Point number four, in Nazareth. Luke chapter one, verse 24 through 25, gives us an introduction and it states, as soon as Joseph awakened from his dream, he obeyed. He violated custom by immediately taking Mary into his home rather than waiting the one year time period of the betrothal. However, no sexual relationship took place between them until after the birth of Jesus. This is according to the written word of God. Herod uh, 
which is spoken of in chapter 2, verse 3. It said, when Herod heard, uh, Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Uh, he was troubled because uh, he felt threatened that now uh, what was written in prophecy uh, was apparently taking place and but he was not recognizing that Jesus was the Messiah, that Jesus was the Christ and he had come to take away the sin of the world and he was in fact the Son of God and no man, not even an angel, was able to thwart that is opposed successfully the plan and the will and the way of God. So Herod said uh, to the scribes uh, or the chief priests uh, as he inquired of them whether Christ was to be born. They said to him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophets. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child, and when you found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. The Meiji apparently came sometime after the birth of Jesus, and Mary and Joseph, though still in Bethlehem, we're now in a house, verse 11. And Jesus was now called a child, P-A-I-D-O-N in the Greek, Padon, verse 9 and 11. Instead of uh, being called uh, an infant, Brephos in the Greek, B-R-E-P-H-O-S, Luke 2 and 12, he was now called a child. The Meiji, according to the word of God, came from the east, perhaps from Parthia, were apparently given a special revelation by God of the birth of the king of Jews. Meiji. M-A-G-I, specialist in astronomy, which denotes the fact that they talked about a star was mentioned in Numbers chapter 24 and verse 17. They came to Jerusalem to worship the newborn king. Chapter 2, verse 3 through 8, it is no surprise that King Herod was disturbed. King Herod was not the rightful king. From the line of David, in fact, he was not even a descendant of Jacob, but was descended from Esau and thus was an Edomite. He reigned over Palestine from 37 to 4 BC. He was a puppet king placed in authority by the Roman government and not by God. He had some skills. In fact, he was called Herod the Great. He was a great builder. He did some great things, but he was not anointed he was not a child of God. Like him, there are still many today, even in our churches, do some good things, but 
within their character is evil and the things that they are allowed to do sometimes put forth a lot of good but some evil and it's not recognized by some people which do not have the special anointing and the uh, revelation of wisdom from God. And thus, it's easy for folk to be misled when there is a lot of truth and a little bit of lie. Michael 5 and 2 said that he, the Christ, would be born in Bethlehem centuries before after conferring with the chief priests and the teachers of the law, Herod inquired of the Magi where they had first seen the star, Matthew 2 and 7. He asked the Magi to return and tell him the location of this king so that he could come and worship him. However, this was not what he had in mind. He was foolish enough to think that he could thought, that is, to oppose successfully the plan of God. Didn't mean he wouldn't be able to oppose and to cause great trouble because he would kill many young boys from about two and younger. And God allows even the church and the Christian dome, if you will, to suffer certain consequences. But his will and his way will be done. Bethlehem is about five miles south of Jerusalem. Miraculously, the star that had appeared in the east perhaps from Parthia, now reappeared and led them to a specific house in Bethlehem where they found the Christ child. This was from the north to the south, not the usual travel of a star from east to west. Maybe the same Shekinah glory of God that led Israel in the wilderness over a period of about 40 years, a, a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. When they had found the Christ child, they went in to worship him bearing gifts. After the visit of the Magi, Joseph was warned by an angel of the Lord to take Mary and Jesus and flee to Egypt. Chapter 2, verses 19 through 23. After Herod died in 4 BC, Joseph was instructed by an angel in a dream to return to the land. Verse 20, and because of Herod's sons, now ruling in Palestine, they would move on from Palestine to the Nazareth where he would be called the Nazarene. At 12 years old, he would go up to Jerusalem according to Luke chapter 2 verses 43 through 49, according to the law. And He would be in the temple and when his mom and dad and the party that left Jerusalem after the worship services recognized the fact that Jesus was not in the party, they would go back to Jerusalem and after a period of about three days, they would find him in the temple reasoning with the doctors and the lawyers. This 12-year-old child. Oh, praise his holy name. 
And I can hear them in my mind as they question him, uh, why did you do this? And I can hear him saying, didn't you understand uh, that it is now time that I be about my father's business? In other words, he's saying as he recognized the fact that he was the son of God, that he, he came and he was anointed to take away the sin of the world. Although Mary and Joseph didn't fully understand. But it wasn't time for him to start his ministry then. So in obedience, he went back with his parents. That was at 12 years old. At about 30, and although there are many things written in books other than the Bible, Historically speaking, it says he grew up in Nazareth. But it doesn't tell us much about him until he was about 30 years old. And according to Luke chapter 4, verse 16 through 29, he went into the synagogue in Nazareth and he stood up and he read from Isaiah 61 which says I have been anointed to preach the gospel. He stopped in the middle of the sentence that talks about the acceptable year of the Lord which is talking about his first advent. But he stopped in the middle of the sentence and he didn't read where it says and the day of vengeance because that would be talking about his second advent or when he would come the second time and the people in the synagogue didn't understand when he said this day this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. They reasoned among themselves and asked the question, isn't this Mary and Joseph's son? The son of the carpenter and how is it that he's saying that this day this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing? In other words, they was not acknowledging and recognizing the fact that he was the Son of God. That he was the self-existent one. That he was the self-sustained one. The creator, the Lord, our God. They tried to run him over the brow of a hill, but he slipped away from them. Yes, and he went on about, and as recorded in Luke chapter 4, verse 1 through 13, he was led or driven by the Holy Spirit in the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. But after he had uh, uh, defeated the temptation of Satan and Satan left him when he couldn't get Jesus to do what he wanted him to do. He left him for a more opportune time. John the Baptist would proclaim him. John the Baptist, the forerunner. And then Jesus would take up his ministry. And he would go about preaching and teaching the word of God. 
Ultimately, for about three years, he would be led up to Calvary. At Calvary, at Golgotha Hill, according to the word of God, he died. They speared him in the side. They placed the crown of thorn around his head. And the scripture were fulfilled that said that not one bone would be broken because when they came, they found out that he was already dead. But he authenticated who he said he was when he got up on the third day morning. Yes, Jesus, thank you, Lord. And that ultimately, yes, he would go about preaching and teaching. Ultimately, the great tribulation would come. And after the great tribulation, he would establish his kingdom during the time frame that was called the millennium. After the millennium, yes, ultimately Satan would be loose who had been bound for a thousand years. But ultimately he would overcome Satan and the false prophet and those that chose to reject Jesus. They would be thrown in the lake of fire. And ultimately, in the eternal state, Jesus would receive the bride of Christ, which is the church, and would come forth the new heaven and the new earth and the new Jerusalem. And ultimately, they would crown him Lord of Lords, King of Kings. Thank you, Jesus. And ultimately, we would dwell uh, we will dwell in a city built on 12 foundations. There won't be any need for any more Mount Olives and Mount Zions and Mount Canaan's. There won't be any need for the moon and by implication the stars and the sun, because the Lamb will be the light. Won't be any need for that. Won't be any more sickness, won't be any more death. And as we dwell in that city, built on 12 foundations, gates of pearls, Thank you, Jesus. Streets of gold. And there will be a tree on either side of the river. And water will flow from the midst the throne of God. Thank you, Jesus. And we'll be able to worship him throughout of eternity. Won't be any need for any more sickness or death or healing because that word healing in that context means therapeutic or health giving. We'll be able to worship him throughout eternity. I'm glad about it. Aren't you glad today that Jesus died but he got up? And that he will overcome all wickedness. If you love him today, say, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I die. The door of the church is open. For the reception of members by a letter of Christian experience or candidates for baptism. 
The door of church is open and Jesus is that door. Won't you come to Jesus today? I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody right. Till I die. I'm going to treat every body right. I'm going to treat every body right. Till I die. Greetings to our Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church family and friends. To God be the glory. We want to thank you for tuning in and viewing the services today. And we want to thank you for your continued support of this ministry in your viewership and your generous giving. And we pray that you will continue to view each week and continue to give generously to the ministry. As we are in the midst of celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we want to wish you and your family a very safe and happy holiday. From our family to yours, happy holidays. Thank you, honey. I join you in uh, acknowledging that God has been so good to us and we ask his continuous blessings and our safety as we celebrate this holiday season. I pray that he will continue to bless us, not only through this season and keep us safe, but throughout uh, the coming year and years to come. May God richly bless each of us.